Hi there, listeners and subscribers. Welcome back to Canada's Great Unknown. We hope you are enjoying the stories we're putting out to the world. People say that they are seeing strange lights in the sky all across the country. Lights that look nothing like planes, birds, helicopters, or even Chinese lanterns. Here are some people who have had strange sightings in Canada's skies. So sit back, relax, and enjoy these stories from areas you may recognize. If you have a story that you would like to share with us, email us at Canada's Great Unknown at gmail.com. We'd also really appreciate if you followed us on Twitter at CGU Stories, on Instagram and TikTok at Canada's Great Unknown. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you clicked on that subscribe button and rang that bell here on YouTube, so that way you can follow along when we post new content. Also, please leave a comment below and let us know what you think or stories you'd like to hear. My name is Tony, and for the last 27 years, I've been a long-haul truck driver hauling goods from Edmonton up to the Northwest Territories and the Yukon. You name it, I've hauled it. Food, cars, ATVs, clothing, there isn't much that I haven't had in the trailers behind my big rig. Trucking is one of those jobs I've always loved. It's not a career for everyone, but I like being on my own and one with the road. Sometimes I even think my wife, Sharon, likes the silent times at home as well, as I'm not known as the most quiet of fellas. On the road, I've seen some pretty incredible things while driving north. I've seen the northern lights more times than I can count. Even had my semi destroyed in an accident once when a 2,000 pound bull moose decided he was going to go hop in front of my truck while following a couple of ladies across the highway. He never did make it to those fine looking cows though. I've seen the 24 hour sun and the days where the sun never rises. Let me tell you all, up north we have some beautiful scenery that those near the border in the south will never see. On this particular occasion, me and my driving partner Dale were taking our trucks up to Whitehorse to deliver a load of goods to the hardware stores. This was about a month before Christmas in 2020. The 2,000 kilometer trek would take us a couple of days to get up there. We mostly drove at night to keep out of the way of the traffic and namely wild game that might be crawling around the highways. I always preferred to drive at night because it's just so peaceful and less speeding traffic to deal with. I'm a pretty good amateur photographer as well, so when the Aurora Borealis comes out to dance, I don't mind taking an hour or two to take some photos of her lighting up the sky. On this night, we were a couple hours northwest of Fort Nelson when we hit some pretty intense fog. Dale was in the lead and had radioed over to say he'd be slowing down a bit in this pea soup. This is where things were getting a little dangerous because fog was a pretty good camouflage for the big animals like moose and grizzly bears crossing the road. The fog lasted for about 40 clicks before it started to clear up. As we came out of the fog, there was low cloud to the north before we started our climb into the mountains again. Dale came over the CB once again, stating, Looks like when we hit the mountains, we may be in for some thunder and lightning. I slowed my rig down a bit so I could get a look around Dale's truck and trailer to see what looked to be bolts of lightning coming out of the clouds. There was a rest stop coming up, so I told Dale to meet me in there because I needed a bathroom break before making the haul through that mountain pass. In my rig, I have an iPad that I keep logged into a travel app that updates the road conditions and weather in real time. When I hop back in my truck, I checked it for any weather warnings, to which it stated there was none. I hopped on the radio to Dale saying, this is weird. There's no sign on my app that we're in for an electrical storm. Dale hated technology. 
He was pretty old school. And he laughed back. Dude, how many years have you been on the road? That crap you use is wrong more times than the weatherman. I just laughed back and told him to lead the way. Dale was right, and sometimes the app didn't account for those sudden Canadian storms that just jumped out of nowhere, especially at this time of year in the north. We started our climb into the mountains on Highway 97, otherwise known as the Alaska Highway. The lightning strikes were continuing in the distance, but we seemed to be getting closer to them. As we started to approach where these lightning strikes were coming from, Dale noticed something odd. He radioed, Hey Tony, these lightning strikes, you notice anything missing? I looked around. What you mean, bud? I didn't really understand and really didn't feel like taking my eyes off the road. Then Dale stated, Tony, there ain't no clouds in the sky. What? I stated. That can't be. I then put my brakes on again to create some darkness between Dale's rig and mine. I then looked out the window and saw the lightning strikes ahead, but no clouds, just stars in the sky. Dale, there's a pullout about a click ahead. Let's pull over and take a look at this. I loved anomalies, and I'd never seen anything like this before. When we got to the pullout and killed the truck lights, sure enough, there were stars everywhere in the sky. You could see the Big Dipper right to Orion and every other constellation in between easily. Dale lit up a cigarette looking at these lightning bolts getting closer to us. What we were able to tell is that there were actually two bolts coming down side by side from the sky to the ground. This really didn't make any sense. We stood and watched, wondering what this was all about. I then noticed these three satellites flying in a triangular formation towards us on the east side of the highway. Then I noticed the same thing on the west side. I pointed them out to Dale. As they flew closer towards us, we then saw these white balls of light form in between the triangles, then shoot into the ground. I then stated to Dale, Uh, bud, that's not lightning, my friend. Dale immediately threw his half cigarette on the ground and immediately lit another, all while staring up at these, whatever they were. These two black triangles kept coming towards us. I'd never seen anything like this before. I started listening for noise, but there was none. They seemed to be floating in the sky, traveling south. Their size seemed to increase as they got closer to our position on the ground. These two craft looked like they were the size of a hockey rink each. They slowly floated over top of us, and as they did, the stars above them all disappeared. Dale and I stood silent watching these two craft or whatever they were, floating through the atmosphere. As they went over, there was this ominously deep buzzing sound that seemed to penetrate our ears and our bodies. You could feel it more than you can actually hear it. It almost felt like we were being scanned. As this was happening, I saw Dale quickly run to the cab of his rig and climb back into his truck. He rolled down his window and yelled, Get back in your truck and let's get the hell out of here, you dummy. I stood and watched as these triangles passed us and the pulsating buzzing in my body started to stop. They continued gliding south as I watched them until they were out of sight. I walked back to my truck and jumped back in. Dale pulled out first without letting me know he was starting to drive again. I quickly put my rig into gear and pulled in behind him. I looked in my driver's side mirror, and in the far off distance, I could see those lightning bolts, or whatever they were, coming down onto the ground again. I radioed over to Dale, asking if he was all right. After a few seconds, he responded with, I'm good, but don't ever talk to me about what we saw here ever again. 
We drove silently for a couple of more hours before I saw Dale pull his rig over at a rest stop to catch some sleep before finishing our trek north. I don't know if those craft were human or not, but I could tell you this. When I woke up the next morning, after a few hours of shut-eye, I puked my guts out. I have a feeling it had something to do with that buzzing that we felt when they flew over. Hi there, Canada's Great Unknown. My name is Jackson, and I am 19 years old. I live on a reserve up near the Saskatchewan Northwest Territories border. That's about as accurate as I'm going to get for you. I came across Canada's Great Unknown after hearing Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio talking about the launch of this new channel, so I thought I would get my story in. Coming from an Indigenous background, I can tell you that I grew up with the stories from our elders about the Star People, how they would come and take us, and if we were lucky, drop us back at our homes. In fact, many of our people, like my grandmother, believed that when people from our nation went missing, that they were actually taken by Star People and not returned. It was a scary thing for us to hear as kids growing up because we never knew if we were going to be abducted by them. Now, this wasn't a boogeyman in the closet or under the bed type stories either. These were real. My uncle on my mum's side, Larry, never came back. I remember before he disappeared, him telling me a couple years ago that the star people wouldn't leave him alone. And if I ever saw the low lights, sometimes in the shape of a triangle or boomerang in the sky, to run into the basement of the house to hide. He never said hiding actually worked, though. About a year ago, my girlfriend Charlie and I were walking back to my house after one of our annual ceremonies. It was about a 15-minute walk from our community hall. We had just helped celebrate our chief's 71st birthday. It was a spring night in late May where it was still a little cold to walk without a jacket on. Charlie was cold, so I gave her mine and placed my hands in the front pocket of my hoodie. In our area, there are very few street lights and even less traffic, so it was mostly us walking in the dark night with the stars above. About 10 minutes into our walk, we heard a few dogs in the area starting to bark. Now, this wasn't unusual as we have a lot of wildlife around here. But there was something strange about the intensity that the dogs were barking. They seemed angry about something. We started to pick up the pace in case it was something we didn't want to see. As I said, there's a lot of animals around here and legends such as Wendigos and Sasquatch in our area. When we were about five minutes from my home, something caught the attention of Charlie's eye. What is that? She said pointing up. Come on, Charlie, we gotta run. As I looked up to see what it was, we gotta run fast. But running really wasn't an option, as Charlie was wearing a dress and high heels. But we went as fast as we could. Coming towards us was this big black thing. It looked like one of those boomerangs that my uncle had warned me about. I decided to grab Charlie's hand and cut through the trees. When we came out of the trees, we were just a couple hundred feet from my backyard. We could still see the UFO as it started to light up. It had one light in the front tip of it, then two others on each side. The lights were this orange color. It seemed to be hovering there like it was waiting for us. The next thing I knew, I woke up on my couch. My pants were undone and my shirt was untucked. Charlie was asleep on the love seat. Her white dress looked disheveled and had a couple of weird stains on it. Just as strange as figuring out what had happened, when I looked at my feet, I was missing a sock and my shoes were nowhere to be seen. I woke up Charlie, who was very groggy, and I asked her if she was okay. When she finally came out of her sleepy days, she started to panic. She didn't know what the stains were on her dress, and 
she had what looked to be three little red puncture wounds in the shape of a triangle just above her wrist. I unfortunately found the same marks near my ankle where I was missing a sock. We both looked at each other, scared. It was now 8 o'clock in the morning. The sun was out. I have no idea what went on or when we got back. I just know that when I talked to the elders about it, they said the star people must have taken us. They immediately wanted us to go cleanse with our medicine man. My name is Steve. I'm a 23-year-old from Moose Jaw, where I grew up as a military brat as my dad was in the Canadian Armed Forces. My father's final post was at CFB Moose Jaw. We moved there when I was 14. Being in a military family, we had stops in BC, Alberta, Newfoundland, and now Saskatchewan, as my father was a fighter pilot. I figured I'd share this story with you because I've never told anyone outside of my ex-girlfriend about this. In fact, it was the reason why we broke up. I was 17 at the time this strange incident happened, and to this day, it still shakes me to the core. I'm not sure what happened, but I do know that it did. I had been dating this farm girl named Lacey for about four months at this time. We were in high school together, and she lived out of town. On this particular night, it was a fall night in early November, before the snow had started to fall for the winter. I was invited over to her place for dinner and to watch some movies with her family. My parents were cool with it, as they knew Lacey's mom and dad. I left my house around 6.30 p.m. and told my parents I would be home around 11, 11.30. From my house to Lacey's was about a 20-minute drive. If you've never been to Saskatchewan, let me explain it to you. It's flat, with rolling hills. It seems like the land and roads go on forever. And at night, when you get out of the city lights, there are literally millions of stars to stare at. It's actually pretty incredible, and I love it here. But on this night, something weird caught my attention. I drove an old Dodge Ram truck. This pig cost me less than I could afford to fix on it. But it was mine, and I had earned that truck by working since I was 14. There wasn't much traffic on this particular night. The WHL Warriors were playing at home that night, so everyone had already rushed into town to get to the rink, which meant there was very few cars, if any, on the road on the way to Lacey's. About 10 minutes out of the city, where the street lights start to get dark along the farm roads, my truck's engine all of a sudden started to sputter and started to shake. The lights on my dashboard started flashing on and off. I started getting pissed off as I had just had my truck in for a tune-up three weeks previous. Eventually, the engine stalled and I rolled to a stop on the side of the road. I slammed my hand on the steering wheel, upset that I was going to be late to Lacey's for dinner. It didn't help that I was hungry as anything and Lacey's mom was a really good cook. I took a deep couple of breaths to calm my anger at my truck for failing me and was about to pick up my phone to call Lacey when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I noticed these really bright lights coming towards me in my rear view mirror. I thought, great, someone can give me a hand and at least I can get a ride to Lacey's place. After a couple of minutes, I started to grow frustrated again because the lights seemed to be at the same distance as when I first saw them. Was this person having car trouble too? I stepped out of my vehicle and started walking back to see if those people behind me needed assistance as well. But the lights were gone, vanished, disappeared. Where did they go? I started to feel uneasy, like something bad was going to happen. I quickly ran back to the cab of my truck, hopped in and locked the doors. 
I nearly jumped out of my seat as all of a sudden there was light all around me, like someone had put a spotlight over top of my vehicle. This light was everywhere. It was like the sun was shining down on me and my truck alone. In the distance, everything was black from what I could see. I tried to start my truck to get out of there. No use. It still wouldn't fire up. I started shaking, wondering what the hell is going on. Then, all of a sudden, the light blinked out and whatever it was, was gone. I started having a panic attack. I needed to get out of there for my own safety. I begged my truck to start. Please start for me. I turned the key and it fired right up, like there were no problems at all. I put my truck in drive and hit the gas. I tried calling Lacey, but for some reason, my phone was dead. I had just charged it before I left home. No biggie, I figured, as I would be in her driveway in just a couple of minutes. When I got to Lacey's farm, all of the house lights were off. Odd, I thought. They must be watching a movie or something. I parked my vehicle, got out, and walked to the front door and rang the doorbell. No answer. I waited a couple of minutes, then rang again. Lacey's dad answered the door, wearing pajamas, looking as if I'd just woke him up. Hi, Mr. Smith. How are you this evening, I asked. Evening, he stated. Stephen, it's the middle of the night. What the hell are you doing here so late? What do you mean, sir? What do you mean it's late? It's only 7.20. Kid, I don't know what kind of drugs or whatever you're on, but it's three in the morning, he stated. Three in the morning? No, there must be some mistake. No mistake, son. Just then, Lacey joined her dad at the door. Where were you? I called and texted you like 15 times with no answer. Perplexed, I answered my phone had died. And looking confused, I stated, I just left home like 20 minutes ago to get here. Don't lie, Stephen, she said. I think you need to go home and call me tomorrow so we can talk. With that, Lacey and her dad closed the door on me and I walked back to my vehicle scratching my head. I drove home without incident, still wondering what went on. How could it be three o'clock in the morning? I pulled into my driveway. My mum must have heard my truck pulling in because she was right at the front door when I walked up, yelling at me, asking me where I was. I was supposed to be home four hours ago. I told her what happened. She didn't believe my story either. Are you on drugs? She asked. No, Mom, I'm not. Mom asked for my keys as I was grounded for lying and breaking curfew. I was grounded until I could tell her and my dad the truth of what was going on. Three days later, the local newspaper came out. In that paper, there was an article of a UFO that was spotted over our area around that same time of night. I immediately went pale white. Was I taken? Did something happen? I showed my mom the article, saying, You don't believe me. Look at this. I don't know where I was, but something happened. I'm afraid, to be honest, to find out, as I was missing time for almost seven hours. Where did I go? What happened? Maybe it's best that I don't know.